The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. I was at one of my favorite places to find random junk, you know, the dollar store, and I found these light up headbands. Now they have three settings, fast strobe, slow strobe, and full on. Uh, I like the idea of these, but the strobing is faster than I want. So today I'm going to show you how to make your own flashing LED circuit using a 555 timer. I'll start with a quick review of the 555 timer. The 555 has eight pins. Pin one connects to ground. Pin two is used to set the 555 output high, turning on anything connected to the output at pin three. Pin four is a reset pin. It gets connected to VCC to keep it inactive. When not in use, pin five gets connected to ground using a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. Pin five is control voltage and can be used to adjust the threshold at which pin six is triggered. Pin six is used to reset the output of the 555 back to low. Pin seven is a discharge pin. It's connected internally to a transistor that turns on when the 555 output is low. This allows anything connected to pin seven to be connected to ground through that internal transistor and pin eight gets connected to VCC. We can use the 555 timer to create a circuit with lights that flash automatically like the one in this headband, even though I don't have it on because it's kind of obnoxious. To do that, we need to build an A-stable circuit. In the previous lesson, we learned that an A-stable circuit has no stable outputs, so the output automatically oscillates between high and low. When the output is high or on, the capacitor connects to ground and begins charging up. When it has enough charge to trigger pin six to reset the output to low, the discharge transistor turns on, connecting the capacitor to ground, allowing it to drain. The key to an A-stable circuit is the connections between pins two, six, and seven, creating an RC circuit made of resistors and a capacitor. Here's a schematic of a basic A-stable circuit. We can adjust the values of this resistor and this capacitor to make the lights blink faster or slower. There's an equation for calculating duration and duty cycle based on the values of the components. You can also find calculators online that will do the math for you. But today, we're just gonna experiment. I'll start with using a 10 microfarad capacitor for C1 and a one kilo ohm resistor at R2. Luckily, I still have this resistance substitution box that I made in a previous episode. So I can get the circuit set up on a breadboard and use the substitution box to quickly change the resistor value to see what it does to the timing of the flash. To the breadboard! Okay, so I have the resistance box hooked up between pins six and seven so I can change the value of R3 easily. I'll start with the lowest option on the kilo ohm side, 6.8. Let's see what that looks like. All right, with my headband on, I can see that's pretty close to the speed of the fast blink or the fast strobe on the headband. Okay, I'll switch the headband to the slow blink to see if we can find a value to match this speed. 10 kilo ohms is still a little bit too fast for the LED. Let's switch to 22 kilo ohms. That's a little closer. That's a, that's a nice speed. So 22 kilo ohms is pretty close to the speed of the slow blink, but I think for our project, I might want a little bit slower, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, 22 kilo ohms is slow enough to strobe that it doesn't hurt my eyes and brain, so I might use that, but let's see what 33 looks like. Okay, that's not a very big difference. That's a nice slow strobe, that's pretty good. Let's see, 68 kilo ohms. Yeah. Okay, 100 kilo ohms, that's a really nice speed. And I'm gonna keep going one more. Ooh, that's a really slow blink. That could be good if you wanna have like eyes that are creepily blinking through your window or something, or just like a really subtle blink. So that's pretty good too. Okay, so 22, 47, 100, and 220 kilo ohms are all nice speeds. And I want them all for my project, so have an idea. I'll use a four input dip switch so I can have multiple speed options. Flip a switch to connect a resistor to get the desired speed. I've already gone ahead and planned the layout of my circuit. Let's solder it up.
The whole circuit can fit on half of one of these lengthwise, so score the protoboard and break it in half. Start with placing the 555. There just needs to be enough room for a resistor and a couple wires to the left of pins 1 through 4. Add a black wire to pin 1 that will later get soldered to ground. Solder a wire to pin 2, connecting it to pin 6. Solder a 220 ohm resistor to pin 3. Leave the other end unsoldered for now. You can add whatever LEDs you want here. I took some LED strands, removed the battery pack, and added a female plug to the end. If you do this, make sure you mark which wire is positive and which is negative. By adding this two-prong male plug to the perf board, the LED strands can be plugged in. The other end of the 220 ohm resistor gets soldered to one pin of the plug. Next, add a red wire at pin 4 that will later get connected to VCC. Pin 4 is reset and active low, so connecting it to VCC keeps the pin inactive. Pin 5 needs a 0.01 microfarad capacitor that connects to ground. Solder one lead to pin 5 and leave the other unsoldered for now. Pin 6 is already connected to pin 2 with a wire. This connection also goes to the 4 resistors and a 10 microfarad capacitor. Place the capacitor with the negative lead, that's the one with the line, towards the LED plug. The positive lead can connect to the resistors. Leave enough room with the leads so that the capacitor can be bent over to help the circuit keep a low profile. The four resistors will be placed next to the capacitor, with the first in the same row as pin 6 and the rest continuing below. The resistors don't have to be in any order, but I like to keep things organized. So first will be the 22 kilo ohm resistor, then the 47 kilo ohm, 100 kilo ohm, and 220 kilo ohms at the bottom. Next, the dip switch gets placed next to the four resistors. Solder each resistor to a pin on the dip switch. The pins on the other side of the dip switch all get soldered together, and then soldered to a wire connecting to pin 7. This connection also goes to a 1 kilo ohm resistor that connects to VCC. Solder one lead of the resistor to that joint, but leave the other for now. Now add the power switch. Solder the center pin to one of the side pins. The 1 kilo ohm resistor gets soldered to one side. The other side will get soldered to the red wire of the battery connecting the circuit to VCC through the switch. The last pin is 8, which needs to go to VCC. Pin 4 also needs to go to VCC, so solder the wire from 4 to connect it to pin 8.
solder another wire here that will connect pin 8 to the switch where the 1 kilo ohm resistor connects. This makes sure all VCC connections get turned on with the power switch. Last is our power source, a 9 volt battery and snap. Thread the wires through the holes in the corners of the perf board, red near the power switch and black near the LED plug. Hot glue in place at the holes. Trim the red wire so that it reaches the switch and solder to the last pin on the power switch. Trim the black wire so that it reaches the second pin on the LED plug and solder them together. At this time, solder all ground connections together. The black 9 volt battery wire, the LED plug, the negative lead from the 10 microfarad capacitor, the second lead from the 0.01 microfarad disc capacitor, and the black wire from pin 1. Turn it on. Ooh, that's handy. It just stays on. All right, let's play with these dip switches. 22 kilo ohms. Ooh, nice and fast. 47 kilo ohms. Nice subtle blink. 100 kilo ohms. Ah, nice and slow. And 220 kilo ohms. Super slow blink. Now I can use this circuit to jazz up a hat, headband, skirt, or whatever else I want to add blinking lights to. Now I came up with the idea for this project around Halloween. Surprise, surprise. So all my application ideas revolved around costumes and decorations. But what ideas do you have for how to use this circuit in a project? Blog about your ideas or ask some questions on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.